start? Uh, yeah, we're live. Oh, hi, hi everybody. I'm Clark Isaac, civil liaison of the Ecumenical Order of Christ. Today's topic is walking in truth. And I'm joined here today by Archbishop Eric Logan, Archbishop of America for the Ecumenical Order of Christ. Yeah, thanks for having me, bro. Uh, it's a pleasure, always. Eric, I'm trying to convince him to be one of our regular guests. We're going to see how this goes. Walking in truth is a topic that each and every one of us can relate to, including everyone at home. And I know that it's, it's something that's going to touch home with everybody. And we're going to try and, and, and cite a few teachings that you might be able to relate to, God willing. Um, we could walk in this journey together, this walk in truth. That's the plan. That's a good one. All right. So I, I guess when, we're, when we suppose that we should walk in truth, one thing that we should always do is be open to correction because not a single one of us in this world has all of the answers. So if we're going to really be honest to ourselves about our desire to walk in truth, we need to be open to correction. And that could come from any direction. And I'm not trying yeah, to rhyme, but yeah. I feel like we're all still learning, you know. There's a lot we've come to figure out and verify and accept over the years, but still there's a lot we don't know even as being regarded by some as some of the most enlightened people in the world it doesn't feel like it sometimes because we're still learning that's just well, the way it is that's well, what can we provide the universe some spiritual food what do we know well on the subject of walking in truth I mean, you might have heard it before but a lot of times when a person's lying to others they're not really lying to others they're lying to themselves more than anything especially when they start to believe it but Sometimes it's not so much as an outward lie, it's just a false notion that you hold on to because it's more comfortable or the alternative is more terrifying or more uncomfortable. It might remove your notion of control of your worldview and your state in the world. But the fact is, you have to always be willing to face that uncomfortable truth, willing to not lie to yourself. you got to be honest with yourself. That was one of the things, um, kind of a little bit of a testimony as well, when I was still in Babylon, America, you know, really weighing it in my heart and in my head and prayer and all of that to make Exodus or not. Well, sooner or later I had to accept the answer that prayer was giving me. This is real. It's time to go. Do what needs to be done. And so we, here we are. <laughs> So I suppose walking in truth in, in, in that particular topic is a matter of what truth am I willing to face and what is the truth of the matter that I'm actually denying within myself and I'm willing to face it. And can I face it alone or should I be facing it with other people? And who are those people? You know, asking yourself these questions and, and being open to the answers. But that, that question in particular brings to mind, you know, join when it comes to people that are in obedience to the Lord. You're trying to leave Babylon. You should be talking the most with the people who have already left Babylon. That would seem the obvious conclusion, wouldn't it? I mean, if we're really being honest yeah, with ourselves. I mean, maybe ask the people who can speak from experience a little bit. Seems like a good idea. I don't want to sound like too much of a smartass, but it's weird. Some, of the, some people really seem to come up with their own higher picture in their head about how this is supposed to go, what what they, their sometimes crazy expectations they get, perfect world expectations in some cases, but that's not where we live yet, yet, but talk to us. You know, when you were talking about preconceptions just now, it brought to mind that that could apply to a lot of different things, and really preconceptions tend to make us deny the truth if it's contrary to it. You know, if I, if, I, if I believe in some kind of uh, dogma or spiritual truth, and I elevate that above any perceivable facts that come my way that contradict it, well, then, then right there, I'm, I'm lying to myself, and I'm lying to others, but most importantly, I'm denying myself the ability to even perceive the truth. And if I'm going to be walking in truth, again, being open to correction, especially about the things that I hold closest and most dear to me, would seem to be the most important. Yeah, for sure. Honestly, 
the uh, I'm, I'm trying to remember if it was Mark Twain or Albert Einstein. It might have been a third person whose name I've completely forgotten, but it's, it's a very old quote. Yeah, yeah, it's a very old quote, but it, it's a truism. It still stands today. It's much, much easier to deceive someone than to convince them that they've been deceived. Because once they've got that notion in their head, they're going to hold on to it and run with it. Case in point, most world religions today, and we're offering them, hey, most of what you're saying, your general attitude is somewhat right, the direction you're trying to go is right, your source is right, but you got a few things mixed up along the way, you got a few things messed up. Here's the correction on that. Let's, let's course correct a little bit for you. They don't want to accept it, because they've, they've grown up with it. They've done everything they can to solidify that as their truth. You hear a lot of people talking about their truth. This is your truth. This is my truth. Well, that's mm. bullshit. Sorry. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> there is one truth. We just haven't found it yet. And when we we're do, working we're on it. we'll find it together. We've it's, got some things that are true. Mm -hmm. And we're, lead, point. we're leading it in the right direction. The Lord is back. Especially. <laughs> it's kind of a big deal. It is. You know, Christ's return, guys. That's a big <laughs> deal. It's, it's the truth. It is. Know. And it's fulfilled in many different religions. So thereby, we have to correct all these different religions. Yeah. But the funny thing is, is it's not really a religious issue. Yeah, it's not. It's actually more of a scientific issue, a factual Historical issue, issue, historical issue. But you could even say it's political. It really is more about changing the world order, the world structure, to get a specific goal within the entire mindset of humanity. Getting people's attitudes, their just general knowledge, their general understanding, their spiritual maturity, their ability to address stress and changes and adapt and all of this is all to get mankind to that higher point as it is in the kingdom so here we are we're correcting most of the isms in the world and you know a lot of theoretical science as well is well deserving of correction because let's face it theory and isms in the world they go hand in hand they're really things that we don't know and we just guess about until we kind of figure it out well we're in a position now where we can match facts with the true parts of the isms, the true isms, and pair them together in such a way that brings understanding, clarity, hope, unity, love, mutual respect, understanding, wow, it just so happens to be all the good things in the world, and here we are bringing these things to you. So let's, why not walk in truth together? What do you say? Maybe jog a little, you know, we could both use some of that ourselves, but, uh, yeah. Oh, we're working on it. Whatever gets us there faster, right? <laughs> faster, but with less injury. Let's go for that. And together, you know, if somebody falls, we'll pick you right back up. So may it be, in the name of Lord Rael. Love y'all.